finds it. And uh, I'll just leave the, the notes to you all to, uh, to, to read. Um, so, right, okay, giving peace and joy, and um, uh, this is from uh, loving kindness. So basically the, the uh, teaching today is that when you go amongst the masses and uh, you want to help elevate the pains of others. So the first bodhisattva vow is to help liberate uh, sentient beings, right? So, but to do that, if someone is suffering, how can that mind be in a position to understand or discern um, the Dharma? So it is to help elevate um, the suffering first, to bring joy and happiness so that the mind is in a state to be able to understand. And this can come from loving kindness and compassion, which is just two of the four infinite uh, minds. Then second, third one is the power of patience. And so the Buddha realized that the certain beings were not in a position to understand the truth. So therefore he got to do that patiently and he does that with the power of, pay, of wisdom and to give the provisional teachings and depending on the capabilities of um, uh, of the sentient beings. So the sentient beings are civilly afflicted. So, and how can worldly words describe the truth when the truth doesn't even exist in the world? So this is what it is. So um, the, the worldly ways, um, there's no truth in this worldly ways and there's emptiness here, illusory in nature. So how can words that we invented or created for us to communicate, be able to describe what is not there. So this is the problem uh, with teaching the, the, the Dharma. And um, so therefore, um, the uh, the minds need to be settled first. So and the mind, unless the mind is settled, uh, it's very difficult for one to understand. So once the minds that have been peaceful and stable, then we'll be able to understand. This is where uh, the, the Buddha uh, practice loving kindness and compassion. So in the Bodhisattva way, the practice of the Bodhisattva way is to go amongst the people, relieve the suffering and hardship. And because this is about um, that loving kindness and exuding the four infinite minds. And no matter how hard things are, we must persevere. So the great power of wisdom, he used the wondrous professional teachings. So despite, um, just like a father to a child, even though the child may be slow in learning, you will have the patience to do that. And sometimes you cannot jump in uh, to the, the essence of the teaching. So he gave provisional teachings instead. So in much, very much the same way as we get educated through the process, we start from primary school, secondary school, and before you go to university, we can't just jump at the university level. So and this patient perseverance and wisdom actually is part of the six parameters. So in three sutra verse, the, um, so the Buddha wanted to quickly infuse sentient beings uh, with the Dharma essence. Our ignorance of sentient being is too severe. So therefore we need to spend time treating the mental ailments. So and then the mind is in a position to understand the Dharma. It's very difficult for one to accept it. So that's why we, we don't, I mean, for me in my practice, I, I do not go around converting people. Um, because if they don't have the affinity, it's very difficult for one to understand. But obviously, when you go around and help others and inspire others to find out what you are practicing, and that's what we do, right? We live the exemplary life, which is what the lesson yesterday was. So we do that. Um, we don't go in there and, and, and drown on them because the mind is not able to understand. So how can then one accept the Dharma? So this is why this uh, the Buddha taught, taught us with a skillful means the way we go about uh, doing that. So growing in the Dharma, they, <clears throat> they uh, have already accepted three vehicles. So he taught according to the capabilities. But to do this, um, one has to develop the wisdom to get out from this cyclic existence. Because otherwise, um, and, and unless one understand um, the accept karma and cyclic existence. It's very difficult for one to understand the Dharma. So the Buddha waited for 40 years uh, to do this and <clears throat> diligently uh, taught um, based on capabilities of the beings at that time. So for, for us, in very much the same way, 
um, we also need to be patient uh, in our practice and uh, so that we are, are stable. Um, and, and this stability is important to understand the stability and the faith because we will come across a lot of challenges in the course of our life. So unless we hold true to that faith and be stable in our practice, um, we will not be able um, to, um, to practice well. If we cannot practice well, we will not be able to share very well. So with compassion and wisdom, the Buddha considered how certain beings would be able to realize the meaning behind his words. How would certain beings be able to realize the Buddha's original intent, the meaning behind the words he spoke? And that's the reason I mentioned the limitation of our worldly words. So in this power of teaching, um, <clears throat> it's about uh, the Buddha combining the uh, spiritual powers and the power of compassion and wisdom. And it's like two hands putting together. And uh, that is where we can exercise wisdom and samadhi. And you must concentrate, um, we must concentrate and this concentration is the power of samadhi, which is the stillness of the mind, because otherwise, if, if one is not focused, it's, um, one will be easily rattled by the worldly ways, especially for us as householders. So the lessons learned, um, which I won't uh, repeat, uh, so we can read about this. Um, so let me jump straight to contemplation. Um, <clears throat> Flow in your practice beyond the sound of the mind. You see, the, um, um, we live in the um, uh, worldly ways. We hear a lot of noise in the world. And so the calling of the noise, uh, sometimes we need to understand um, the, um, because we can be easily distracted, especially when we have our mundane consciousness. So in a practice, we need to go beyond that. So we need to respond to declaring call of compassion with wisdom and do so skillfully, right? Which is what the teaching is today, isn't it? Compassion, wisdom, and we have skillful means. So we need to use our ears to listen to the sound of compassion and not the noise of the world. The sound of the worldly cause can drown your senses because you do not know, and, and all the sounds in the world, you must also remember, and must always say, they're all illusory. So you drown your senses. So in the emptiness of the noise, listen to the sound of silence with compassion and wisdom. And that's where the truth of the teaching of the Dharma is. The echoes of goodness are truly endless. The echoes will move your heart. On relationship, the sweet practice of a householder is a practice that you can rise above the winds flow beyond the sound, feel beyond the emotion, and resonate with the divine. Okay, Kanan, brothers and sisters, uh, sorry, but I had to rush through very quickly. Yeah, Thank Kanan, you so much. Kanan, Kanan, so much. Uh, uh, Brother Jin, I think uh, you need to drink a little bit more water. I think uh, your throat is a bit sore. I mean, okay, thank you.